Hello everyone, this is Dave Martinick and I welcome you to this episode of Teller Shoots. This is a program dedicated solely to the subject of guns, presented for the folks who love guns, to those who shoot recreationally, hunt, collect firearms, or carry for home and self-defense. It's a hands-on-my-gun show. And my guest today is R.J. Michaels. He's a local gun maker, custom gun maker. R.J., thanks for coming. Oh, you're Appreciate more than welcome. I'm glad you invited me. R.J. and I are going to talk about making guns, custom guns. Uh, he's got a lot of wood here to show you and a couple of examples of guns. And then we're going to talk about restoring guns and the difference and why do you want to restore a gun or leave it the way it is. But, R.J., you, um, you started out in Ohio. You're from Ohio. Yeah, I started in Kettering, Ohio when I was 13. A friend of mine, his house was on fire. And I happened to be in the area at the time, and I knew his son. And, and so I went in the house and started pulling his muzzle loaders out. He made muzzle loaders. He, he, uh, he was a German immigrant. Mm -hmm. And uh, when he got home from work, or when they called him, and when he came home from work and his wife, uh, he asked who got his muzzle loaders out of the house, and I didn't get all of them because there were some in the closets, and I didn't go in there. And they told him I did. Well, he called that night to thank me and, and wanted to know if I liked guns, and I said, yeah. So he says, well, he had some of that. The stocks were scorched so bad he couldn't, he, you know, he couldn't save them, but the metal work was good. So he asked me, if, you know, if I wanted to come up and build some muzzle loaders. In your opinion, what prompts? a person to want a person like you to make them a custom gun? To have something that someone else doesn't have, you know, because they're all different. We've got two examples here of guns that R.J. has made, so R.J., reach over there and get that 22 Hornet. Describe the process that you went through to Probably you had the action already, right? Yeah, I had the action, and uh, we made the barrel. And uh, I, this is the first time, it's a half round, half octagon barrel, mm -hmm. and this is the first time I put a beauty ring on it. Okay. And what I did with this, with the, it's a number three octagon barrel, half round, and I, I milled the sides of the receiver to make it match the octagon on the, mm -hmm. that. And this is kind of a rare piece of walnut. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of tiger striped right it's, in here. It's fiddle back walnut. It's hard to come by. You can't hardly find it. The butt plate's new. It's a Niedenauer uh, checkered butt plate. And it's a CVA scope on it, which is like a, a, an old style scope, a Peterson or a Malcolm or yeah. something like that. And it just it went with that gun. Now you got a high wall over here. Yeah. Let me reach for that. This is the high wall action. Now the difference between the high wall and the low wall, you can see it noticeably, it's right here. This is a 4070 bottleneck sharps. That's what this cartridge is in. Okay. The gun's a little heavy because they got a 32 inch barrel on it and it's a number four barrel. They come in five different weights. One, two, three, four, and five weight barrels. Let's talk about the furniture. I know you've brought some examples here. Uh, I think uh, folks will be interested in, you know, what a blank looks like to begin with, yeah. and then through the process, because you do your own, you, you cut them out yourself them out. and file them down and everything, so. These are exhibition grade blanks that I have. <laughs> And that's how you usually get them. Not like that? Unlike this. Okay. They're, they're both blanks. This, they're both walnut. This, again, is fiddleback walnut. This has been uh, inletted into the receiver. Okay. And, and then I've worked it all down to the butt plate here. Okay. And uh, like I, on this piece here, and I was telling Dave earlier, that you get some check marks. And those are hollow in the wood where uh, insects or something's got in there or it's stretched and split. So I'm gonna have to fill these in. How much of this is machined and how much is hand? Most of this is hand. Okay. Hand and sanded. This is one I'm finishing up. This is English walnut. 
and it's got a fleur de lis checkering pattern on it. There's the forearm for yeah. it. But you can see the black grain of yeah, the wood. Right in here. Yeah. It's a, and it's really a pretty piece of wood, like I started to say. It's usually a gun that is in original shape, is, from a collector's standpoint, it is more valuable. It's more valuable if you leave it yeah. as an original. That's right. But you restore it because, well, one, you want to make it beautiful, something to hang on the wall, or you want it, you want to use it, you yeah. want to shoot, shoot it. Let me show some examples here. This is a, a Mauser VZ24, uh, restored by my son, but originally made in Czechoslovakia. When my son got it, it didn't look like this, but he restored it. And the reason he did is because it's a very operable gun. He re it. Everything looks really nice. And this other one is a Savage Model 24 over and under. I put many a squirrel on the dinner table with this gun when I was a teenager. Dad bought it either in the late 50s or early 60s. Uh, and when I gave it to my son, it was dirty. Uh, stock was all pitted. It could need to be completely reblued. The uh, selector switch here from 22 to 410 uh, was broken. All kinds of things happened, and so he, he took it over and he did. He did a good, did job. A good job. He really did a good job on it. And the reason you restore a rifle like this is because it's still useful. This is still a good squirrel gun. <laughs> yeah, they've probably killed more game for kids than anything else. There you have it. R.J. makes guns, he restores guns. Uh, we've shown you some examples of, uh, of his work and what can be done. R.J., thank you for coming. We may have you back. I think there's plenty of subjects we can talk about. Oh, yeah. When it comes to guns, it's the history of our country. That's right. Yeah. So that's it for today, and thank you all for watching. And just remember, be safe, be alert, obey the law, shoot straight. <laughs>